2020 December when we examine the, our Kerala's position is uh, we cannot imagine that only 0.4 percent. When we called for a, a volunteer core for uh, uh, COVID-19, COVID-19 uh, uh, we announced in new media several youngsters, several youth. Uh, men and women registered in the volunteer corps, you know, COVID brigade. That was a fantastic result because of the activity, the policy of the government, the joint activity and the collective activity of the people. TK Shelja a name that became synonymous with success when it came to dealing with COVID-19. K.K. Shelja was the Health Minister of Kerala when the state dealt with multiple crises, starting from Cyclone Oki to floods to the Nipah virus and then to COVID-19. Under her leadership, the state was able to deal with these crises with utmost care and was able to save many, many lives. However, Shelja teacher has always said that this was not because of an individual effort, but due to collective action. Today, we are joined by Kiki Shelja to talk about her recently launched book, My Life as Comrade, in which she talks about her tenure as a health minister, her political journey, the Kerala model, and much more. So, you know, before we talk about how the state, under your leadership, managed to keep COVID casualties so low, or your experience dealing with the Nipah virus, let's start by your personal journey. In your book, you know, you detail about how your family members participated in many historical struggles and how the fact that, you know, your family was based in a place like Kerala, more specifically Kannur, which is a bastion for the left, shaped the person who you are today. So can you start talking about that more? Tell us more about that. Actually, I didn't intend to write a book about me, but always I am thinking, I was thinking, uh, about writing a book with about my grandma and my grand uncles and the great struggles they led in their village at that time, you know. It is according to the left ideology. That is in 1930s, 40s and 50s. And when we got independence, during the independence struggle, our places, all the Kerala uh, lands were under the ownership of the landlord. And the poor peasants were in great struggle and uh, they were actually they were starving because these uh, landlords were collecting levies from the poor people there and uh, the caste system the most uh, vulnerable or uh, ugly face of the feudalism is caste differentiation and caste differentiation was also there in our village and my grandma and grand uncles were fighting against uh, uh, against the British rule and also against the caste system, caste untouchability, uh, uh, and such kind of activities there. And uh, when I was a child, my grandma told me all the stories. She was a very good storyteller. Not only uh, Purana and Vidhikasa, she was telling the stories of great martyrs, great struggles they led. And I was very much interested in communist ideology from the from childhood itself. And my place, uh, Payam Panchayat, uh, uh, and that Payam and uh, nearby places were the places of great uh, freedom struggle and also uh, this uh, peasant struggle against landlords at that time. And uh, my grand uncles called uh, M.K. Ramavni, M.K. Krishnan, I explained in my book about that and they were also uh, great fighters uh, they joined in international congress first and fought against independence for for, for ind independence against british rule they believe that when we got independence only through socialism we can make equality to the poor people and this kind of struggles and their bravery that attracted me very much and my grandma was a brave lady. She directly fought against untouchability and not only fighting, but also uh, she was a social worker more than that, you know. She served the society. From this uh, socialist ideology, she developed an attitude to help others, you know. 
and this kind of thing i uh, want to uh, put for the next generation that is why that is the reason to write this book you know absolutely and of course you were telling stories about your grandmother how she was a revolutionary but i think in many ways so was your mother right i mean she when there was strife in her marriage she sought a divorce which was very rare at the time for a woman to take such a decision so how did the woman in your family influence you and later on your work in the mahila association and as the minister for women and child development yes over the women in my family have had different stories you know one way or other way they were uh, uh, suffering uh, with these attitudes of the society and uh, the customs and traditions etc my grandma went outside uh, for social work but at that time my mother and my mother sister my auntie they had to work at home you know they had to do all the household activities and our family as you know was a well built family in the beginning when my great grandfather was there he was working in the estate of the british estate t estate and uh, she had some monthly salary at that time and we were in a good position in the society we are earning uh, some money but after that after the demise of my great grandfather everything went away and my uncles become the party workers and they are not earning anything they are spending all the money uh, with them and we become uh, adopted and, and my family become very poor uh, at that time my mother and my uh, auntie they worked hard to 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 meet the ends of the life you know and he suffered very much and at that time marriage as i explained in these books no one asked the permission or uh, uh, desire of the women uh, about the marriage life the grand uncles were decide uh, they they are deciding they were deciding uh, to whom they will get married you know same way my mother also get married to a man my father 20 years uh, older than Uh, her you know and no one asked her permission she obeyed all the family they were obeying that was the custom or that was the system uh, in that uh, and my mother worked hard she was a very good lady uh, but she was a brave lady and when she was separated or uh, my father uh, go and marry other women and uh, she discarded our family at that time she decided to fight against that she filed a case in the court that was not common at that time you know and we got uh, this some thing uh, from my father the land ownership and also some money uh, from him and that way she fought against it that also uh, made me some a uh, feeling of braveness so this is the way to life uh, we should have to fight against uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, this um, uh, discrimination and other thing so how did this whole struggle translate into your work as a woman leader and you know of course <coughs> people always uh, highlight your role as a health minister but at the same time you were also uh, serving the portfolio of of the minister of women and child development so from this experience what did you put into your work yes my grandma always took me in all the struggle uh, and all the meetings and conventions etc study classes etc i was a little child at that time and she carry me also and from there itself i was interested in this politics you know that way i came forward i became the unit secretary then village secretary area secretary district secretary state secretary and at last i i reached the party also party area committee member district committee member state committee member now i am cpim central committee member gradually i came forward in and i contested in election party asked me to contest in assembly election that was the first uh, election i was conducted contested uh, that was in 1996 and i became mla in uh, kerala assembly and uh, i contested four times and 
I became MLA four times. This is the fourth time, you know. And uh, uh, last time, the third time, uh, my party asked me to uh, to join the cabinet. Uh, they decided a portfolio to me, and that was health and family welfare and the social justice. Later, social justice department divided into two: social justice, women and children. And I become uh, a minister in. Uh, 2016 to 2021. That was the journey, political <laughs> journey <laughs> by me. And uh, what were the policies you wanted to implement, you did implement when you reached this position? When I became the minister, the most important portfolio was health and family welfare. The other is also very important, you know. I got most important portfolios, women and children and the social justice, everything. But uh, when my secretary, Rajiv Sadanandan, health secretary, visited me first, he asked the minister, what is your intention? What is your idea uh, in the health sector? And you please tell me and we will work for you. We have a very good manifesto, you know, LDF, Left Democratic Friends Manifesto. And uh, under the leadership of the our brave chief minister, Pinrai Vijayan, we were working to fulfill that uh, that manifesto. And I said, uh, in our manifesto, it is stated that our health policy should be people-centered. We should give affordable treatment to all the citizens. We should give free treatment for the poor, below poverty line. And also, we should give quality treatment, you know. That means we should have to strengthen the public health system. And one of my aim or my dream is to the, we should concentrate on the prevention part, you know. So I discussed with my secretary that I want to concentrate on primary health system. He was very happy at that time, madam, you are correct. Huh? We should concentrate on primary health system. We can prepare a primary health project. It was there, the central government is also saying about that. But it is not uh, concrete. We should have a concrete plan for the primary health system. Not only the primary, we should have to attend the secondary level and tertiary also. The district level and taluk level hospitals and uh, the medical colleges. The entire system we should have to revive. We should have some, some kind of reforms uh, because uh, we have a very good uh, public health system, you know comparing to other states, you know. But our public health system was not modeled uh, in some aspects. There are so many things there and we should have to reform that also. We were ready to preparing that kind of a plan. At the same time, the government decided four missions. Four missions. Our chief minister said one mission should be health sector. That was a great blessing to health sector also and for the poor people. One is called Ardra, that is in health sector. So we frame our uh, reform plan according to the mission plan, you know, Ardra mission. And we started. That was a very good idea. And uh, now I am, when I look back or when I remember all these things back, uh, that was a very good period, you know. That five years is thickly packed activities, we can say so. So many challenges we faced, so many challenges. Two devastating floods and the hurricane called Oki, Nipah virus attack and COVID virus attacks. Amidst that, we didn't give up the plan. We have reforms in every sector of health. We converted the primary health system to family health system. Uh, each institution should have uh, 50 lakhs to two and a half crores to build it. Some places only a little bit renovation and we should provide the equipments. Some places we should demolish the building and build a new one. And we started that uh, revolutionary work, you know. In my period, more than 400 hospitals become these family health centers. Now it is going on. It is going on. For medical college, we made master plan for 
from 500 crores to 800 crores like that. Uh, and the, it is working, you know. I think after three or four years, Kerala's infrastructure, public health infrastructure, it will become fantastic. It is going on. And uh, you talked about the conversion of primary health centers to family health centers. A major role, uh, a major responsibility to do this was also played by the people. The government, the health ministry, you mobilized people to you know, raise funds and to carry out efforts which led to this conversion. Can you talk about this, how this was carried out? It was a very good teamwork, you know. Building team inside health sector and outside the society also. We cannot work uh, alone, you know. Because we were getting a meager amount from the central government for the health sector. The central government is spending only 2% of the GDP in the health sector. We are getting that amount. We can utilize that money in some sector, but we have to mobilize resources from the society itself. Uh, Chief Minister said that your work should be people-centered and collectively you should do that. We should inform people and we should uh, uh, mobilize people. Uh, it is a people. It should be a people-centered work. And when we started building this primary health center to family health center, we were getting little bit money uh, from government because we are getting money from KIFB for the major hospitals. But we have to work this our own. And our department had only little fund. A mission means there should be the need of a group of people's uh, work, you know, a teamwork. We are going to the society. Please convene a meeting in your place, in your panchayat, calling all the interested people nearby. And you explain our mission to them. And we have this much of money. And you should also give some money for us, some services. The panchayat, uh, they, were, uh, they have some project. Uh, they decided to uh, put some project on health. And they are uh, giving some money for that, uh, some 25 lakhs to 50 lakhs, Panjayat can give. The concerned MLA, uh, member of Legislative Assembly, they can give fund from the, uh, their fund also. There are, we have some MLA, SDF uh, fund there. And so many people came forward to help us. It is continuing, I think. So when the Nipah virus struck, how prepared was the government and, you know, what was the response? Yes, it was a cruel thing, you know, Nipah virus. And uh, we, I didn't heard or I didn't uh, notice this virus before. Maybe heard about that when we read something, but I didn't even imagine that uh, this virus will come to our place, you know. And when I understand it is Nipah virus in Kauri code, a village called Changarut and uh, uh, T.P. Ramakrishnan, the then minister for uh, for exercise and uh, work, was uh, the MLA there. He called me uh, before some days and said, teacher, something peculiar is happening here. In a family, four people caught some kind of fever, cough, etc. <clears throat> and one died in medical college. The other three are uh, struggling for help, uh, for life. And something peculiar is there. Please come and see what is happening here. We said that please send the uh, sample to the virology lab. They send the sample to Manipal lab. I called Dr. Arun, the virologist there. He said, uh, Madam, it is something peculiar. We are identifying. I will call you back. And when I started Kori code, I mean, it's the way Arun called me. By road, I was going at that time. He said that it was Nipah. And uh, I asked him, what is the peculiarity of the virus? He said, it uh, mortality rate is very high, 70 to 100. There was no medicine. There was no vaccine. It was a very killer virus. It is known as killer virus. And I asked him, Arun, uh, doctor, can we fight against it? Yes, definitely we should have to fight. Then I asked Arun, you please start 
uh, uh, you also come to Kori Kod. I am going directly to the. We have a very good meeting. We discussed everything. We decided to fight against that. First of all, I asked the doctors that if anyone go outside from this village, and they were with the virus because uh, the incubation day, it is forty uh, days, you know, incubation period. Uh, if anyone got a virus at once, it will not come. The symptoms will not come outside after four days, five days, or even after thirteen days, uh, the symptoms will come. And at that time, the media man said, uh, "Minister, uh, all the people are packing up and going to other places from Changrud." We were frightened to hearing that. Next morning, we want to go there. We decided to go there. When I decided, I said I will go there and I will directly uh, inform the people about the government's decision. All the time I was discussing with Chief Minister, and Chief Minister said, "You do everything and and you want the to contain this thing. We can protect the people. We will supply everything for the people." And I got uh, the freedom and I got the courage to do these things there. And we went there. We laid the very next day. and uh, we asked them to a peculiar virus is spreading we cannot go outside you should stay here we will provide everything even you want a toothbrush or toothpaste rice or pulses anything you want government will provide you in your door step volunteers will come and if you develop any symptoms within these days uh, we will ta uh, take you to the hospital that way we stopped the movement first you know that is the clear cut method to stop the infectious virus you know whenever it happens we should close that area and we should contain the propagation or the contain the infection of the virus and that succeed you know and uh, only these 18 people they got the virus from the uh, index case sabit and no other person uh, got from other others from the index case they got 18 caught the virus and 16 died and two survived and then when covid struck did this experience with nipa guide your response you know was the preparation beforehand how did that go? definitely that was a great experience the nipa incident you know i remembered that when i me and my health secretary and other officials went to medical college the medical college principal asked me to have some meetings there in kolikod medical college because everyone was frightened at that time and we went to that medical college the i think it is the third day or second day or third day we went there but everyone was frightened you know yeah look someone is not looking up and one young doctor shouted or she he showed his worries she he said that we are ready to tackle the problem we are ready to work in the isolation ward but the seniors should have to support us and we are once said we are going to die uh, we decided and we send uh, our family uh, away from our house and i told them no need to die you know we should have to practice the prevention method you would have to use the pp personal protection equipments you should have training today itself you know we have donning and doffing of the personal protection equipments and you should be brave enough to fight and at last we all decided these doctors nurses decided to fight the problem and they have training the very same night throughout the night they were giving training Uh, to wearing ppe cleaning everything very good training but when covid came uh, when i heard the news that uh, the first case we examined who came from buhan uh, for covid positive uh, i was in trivandrum at that time i was conducting a night work at that time at once i hurried uh, to the trishur district uh, go to the uh, go to trishur district and uh, i mean it's the way i asked them to convene a meeting as previously 
and there were a very good number of uh, uh, health superintendents of the hospitals in Trishur district, medical college uh, HODs, and all the officials were assembled. I found some enthusiastic face there, and I asked them, "Are you ready to fight?" "Yes, madam, we are ready. No problem." I think they got the enthusiasm from the Nipahins. So how we fought again? All of them were not participated in the Nipah incident, you know. But they called the people who participated in Nipah about the uh, isolation ward protocol and the standard operating procedures, etc. Everyone were aware of that, and they were very ready. I thought uh, they got the enthusiasm from the knowledge they got from the deadly virus Nipah. That helped me also. I am also enthusiastic. I was. Uh, because the, it was the second time we are facing a difficult enemy, you know. And of course, the success of you know the the strategy the government deploys is also dependent on how the people respond. In Kerala, we saw cooperation and trust, but in many other places of India or even the world, this was missing. So, how were you able to ensure? This? Yes, care. I think uh, all of, all of them know that uh, two things are there. One, Kerala is highly educated state, you know. Our, uh, our literature, uh, uh, this uh, percentage is 100% literature in Kerala, you know. Men and women were educated. And I think they can understand the problem easily. And they can go. And second thing, uh, Kerala, there is a social attitude in most of uh, the Kerala's people. Uh, not all, we cannot say so, but uh, the the joint activity and the volunteership, they were ready, you know. When we called for a, a volunteer corps for uh, uh, COVID-19, COVID-19, uh, uh, we announced in new media, several youngsters, several youth, uh, men and women registered in the volunteer corps, you know, COVID brigade. And that kind of attitude was there. Another thing, our government's policy, that is the most important thing. Uh, our government, when we uh, we were tackling with this problem, it was our government which declared this is a health emergency first. Our chief minister declared this is a health emergency, you know. After that, central government declared that because it, is, it came in Kerala first, the COVID. And also, chief minister Panrai Vijan declared 20,000 crore worth package, you know. Before this uh, central government's declaration and that kind of a uh, spontaneous activity that was in Kerala's uh, society and uh, the left government was very very pro to the this kind of activities you know that helped very much the government's policy and government's uh, people-centered activity helped us very much and our public health system also our chief minister convened a meeting of the private uh, uh, hospital owners from the very beginning and we appealed them. This is a, a, a severe problem, uh, health uh, emergency is there and also uh, this is a problem we have to tackle together. So you should have to give some beds from your hospital for isolation wards. The major private hospitals should give uh, uh, 100 beds and uh, the little one, they should have at least 10 or 15 beds. They obeyed and we declared the free treatment to all. The fee, we decided, not the private hospitals, uh, uh, which are, uh, they are not asking us. We will decide the fees and that we will give to the private hospitals. And all of them cooperated. That is why we can tackle the problem easily in 2020, you know. 2020 December, when we examine the, our Kerala's position is, uh, we cannot imagine that only 0.4 percent death. And uh, some agencies uh, have a survey on uh, the excess death. They conducted an excess death analysis, fantastic result. 2020, the COVID year. 29 deaths were less than 2019. 2019. From 2019, 
the uh, number of deaths were less than 2019 in 2020, you know. And that happened only five or six places in the world, Vietnam, Cuba, New Zealand, like places and Kerala was there, you know, that. that was a fantastic result because of the activity, the policy of the government, the joint activity and the collective activity of the people, the police, every department. So, so the collective work, collective work helped us. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us today. And uh, that's all the time we have. This was our conversation with KK Shelja, the former health minister of Kerala, and on her recently launched book, My Life as a Comrade. For more such stories, visit our website newsclick.in and follow us on all our social media handles. Thank you for watching.